The first podcast of Masala History was based on a temple sculpture and fake news around it. We had about 300 listeners for the first show and now in our 18th episode, I am proud to say that we have crossed 3,500 listeners. Thanks a ton to all of you for being so supportive by listening, commenting, messaging, sending candidate topics and providing feedback. In the last episode of this year, I thought I would once again talk about a temple sculpture that had been subject of much discussion. Those of you who have listened to me before know how much I beam with pride when I talk about the South Indian empires, especially the Cholas. And so, here comes one more on them. As promised in one of my earlier podcasts on Rajendra Chola, this edition is based on the magnum opus of the Chola Rain, the Grand Brahadishwara Temple in Tanjavur. Just like the first podcast where we discussed a foreign statue in the Sri Rangam temple, in today's show, we will be talking about another foreigner image in the Brahadishwara temple. Welcome to Masala History by Siva. Travel with me to the modern day state of Tamil Nadu as we discuss some interesting secrets of this UNESCO World Heritage Site and debate the identity of the foreigner in the temple. So sit back in your time machines, set the dial to a thousand years back as we travel to the birthplace of multiple arts and the capital of the medieval Cholas, Tanjavur. Raja Raja Chola was one of the greatest Chola empires who took the Choran glory beyond the borders of the Indian subcontinent. He conquered northern Ceylon or Sri Lanka, established trade ties with the Sri Vijaya Kingdom of Indonesia and the Chinese Empire. Born as Arul Muri Varman, he titled himself Raja Kesari, the Lion King, and as Raja Raja, the King of Kings. It will take several episodes to cover the story of this terrific king, a darling of Tamil pride. He was a great patron of arts and commissioned to build what was then called the Southern Meru, the tallest temple ever attempted. Construction of this Peruvudaya temple started in 1003 common era and ended by 1010 into Rajaraja's 25th year of rule. The temple was called Rajarajeshwaram during the Chora days. In the later years, when part of Maratha set up shop in Tanjore, they gave the name Brahadishwara to the deity and to the temple. Before we head to the main topic, let's quickly do a roundup of some of the amazing facts around the architecture of this thousand year old temple. The main temple is entirely built of granite. More than 130,000 tons of granite is said to have been used. The cutting and carving of the granite stone is not an easy task even today. And what's even more astounding is the fact that there was not a single granite quarry in about 50 km radius of the temple. The big bull or the nandi that weighs over 20 tons has been carved out of a single stone. The first royal portrait is recorded in this temple, a portrait of Raja Raja Chora praying to the Lord Nataraja. There was no binding material used for construction for this temple and yet This temple has survived for over a thousand years where there has been at least five recorded earthquakes in that area. There is an 80 ton rock on the top of the temple tower. There are some interesting yet not proven theories on how was such a big rock taken to the top of a 200 feet tower a thousand years back. Finally, the measures of the platform, the main deity, the total height of the temple The distance of the Nandi, all of them reflect the Tamil language, covering the important count of 12, 18, 216 and 247, which are the numbers of Uyiruthu, Meyiruthu, Uyirmayiruthu and a sum total of all the Tamil alphabets respectively. Such precision. But let's get to the crux of the matter. There is an intriguing image in the northern side of the Vimana or the tower of a foreigner sporting a hat. Hopefully, you can see the picture in the attached podcast cover art of this episode. The man is wearing a covered top dress, which immediately helps us rule out that he is an Indian 
or he's definitely not a South Indian because the Indians and South Indians of those days never wore a top dress. This person is also wearing a bowler hat, which makes it even more complex to decode the identity of the person. Who is he and what is he doing here? Let's debate some theories. First, let's look at uh, the Chinese possibilities. It is very well known that the Choras had strong trade ties with the Tang dynasty in China. In fact, even before Rajaraja's reign, India already had two famous Chinese travelers in Fahyan and Huan Chuang. The facial features of the image in question can be likened to that of Chinese, especially if one notices the eyebrow and the style of the moustache and no beard. But the hat is nowhere close to what the Chinese wear, it's more European. Also, there is no record of a revered Chinese person in those times, given that uh, typical tower sculptures are usually of angels or gods or royalty, we can safely rule out that this image is definitely not that of a Chinese person. Now let's consider the European possibilities. As the hat is certainly European and some features of the face and potential build of the person does resemble Europeans. However, the first recorded travel from Europe to India was by Vasco da Gama in 1498. Now, if one were to assume that the image was carved when the temple was built, it puts us at a dead end. One very wacky theory is that the face is that of King Robert II of France, a contemporary of Rajaraja. It is definitely undeniable that the facial image of the King of Franks matches exactly well with the image in the temple. Also, considering that kings did honor other powerful kings, through such depiction, it does make a case. But again, a French king's image randomly in a South Indian temple tower with absolutely no other historical records to support it makes this more of a romantic thought than anything else. Another supposition is that this image could be that of the Venetian traveler Marco Polo who passed through South India in 1293 CE and perhaps the image was built in the tower 200 years later. But again, no other records give a strong reason to support this theory either. Now let's move a few hundred years later. Many historians have suggested that uh, during Emperor Sarfoji's rule of Tanjavur, they hired architects who carved a Chola succession by carving the Nayaks and Europeans in many parts of the empire. It is a recorded fact that Raja Sarfoji himself was helped a lot by an Anglo-Saxon priest, Father Schwartz. And this image could be that where Sarfoji's way of saying thank you to Father Schwartz. Another strong theory is also that this was the image of Roland Cape, a Dane who commanded the Danish outpost of Tarangambadi or modern day Trankobar in the 17th century when the Nayaks ruled over Tanjavur. All inconclusive theories though. Adding to the mysteries of this temple, this is something perhaps we will never be able to solve for sure. Stay back with me though to hear the most outrageous possibility that explains this image. In the early 1800s, Colonel William Lambton was tasked with measuring and mapping British India. Lambton instituted the Great Trigonometrical Survey of India in the Madras Presidency right after the Tiger Tipu Sultan was defeated and killed. The survey is done by making imaginary triangulations between natural high points such as mountains and peaks. And since southern parts of the Madras Presidency had less of mountains or natural high points to fix the base lines for the survey, Lambton decided to use towers of various temples to help with the survey. He used this giant instrument called theodolite for a survey. This was designed by William Carey, a extremely heavy and bulky equipment. During one such survey in 1808 CE, where the Brahadishwara Vimana Tower was used, Lambton's giant machinery fell from the top of the tower and some of the statues of one side were badly damaged. Lambton knew that he had to spend months repairing it before he could restart his work. So, as a replacement for damaged statues, listen to this, he possibly made his own face. So, there is a possibility 
that this mysterious image in the tower could just be that of a geographer who did a poor cover-up after breaking an existing statue. Lambton, whose plan was to start from the south of India and go all the way north, unfortunately died on the job and was replaced by George Everest, who finished up surveying India by completing the measure of the tallest peak in India and of the world. Well, on that thought, I will say goodbye for this year. Once again, thanks for being listeners and readers of Masala History by Siva. If you like these stories, let me know, leave a comment and don't forget to like or subscribe. Please share them with your colleagues and friends and hopefully as many children as possible. Happy holidays, stay safe and I will see you next year with yet another fresh season of Masala History. Bye-bye.